Um, we have a ton to cover, so we're going to try to go through this as quickly as we can. We know that you guys had a long day and you don't want to spend hours here. But we want to make this as informational as possible. So I will stop in between slides and um, presenters and just do a check to see if there's any questions. Raise your hand, though, if there's something in particular that you want to talk about. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Marty Camella. I'm the president of the Booster Club for Team Auto. Um, the way that we've set up this presentation is so that the other presidents of the Booster Club and some of the other key people, like the coach, are going to come and introduce themselves as they start their section. So I'm not going to introduce them individually right now. I'll introduce them as they start their sections. Um, but for now, and really for the first part of a two-part meeting, unfortunately, um, this is all information for you guys. So if you're a new parent that has no idea about what that video was, that chaos that you just saw on the screen, this is your first opportunity to learn a little bit about what that is and how your students participate. Um, also, more importantly, how you can support your student in that. So on our agenda today is, like I said, an overview of the team. We're going to talk about the fall schedule. Um, we're going to talk about the schedule for next year a little bit as well. Um, we want to introduce the Booster Club and let you guys know specifically what's provided as part of that. And again, we'll answer questions as we get through that. Um, and then we're going to end the first part of the meeting. And at that point, the second part of the meeting will start, and only if you're a member, a current member of the Booster Club do you have to stay. Everyone else is welcome to stay, but we need to keep Booster current Booster Club members present in the room. We have to vote on some changes to our bylaws, so that'll be part two of the meeting. Um, but like I said, as we go, I'm going to stop. I don't want to have anyone talk too fast where you guys have questions and then we don't get a chance to cover those at the end. So please feel free to raise your hand um, and ask your questions. Well, I'm going to actually play the role of moderator as everyone's up here talking. So I'll be looking for questions. Just raise your hand and let me know. And I'll stop them before we get to the next slide. So, any questions? No? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to drive the fence with that. So the first, let's get over there. I probably should have shown that on the screen. The first presenter is our new coach for the team, Mr. Storage. Everyone can Thank you so much. This is like the fourth time some of you have heard me speak about this. I'm really not that conceited. So far, both for this and the school. My name is Dusty Scorch. Uh, I just moved here from Jacksonville, Florida, about eight years there. Um, I've taught a variety of subjects robotics, uh, AP physics, AP chem, uh, ACE physics, as well as several mathematics classes. We've been working out one way or the other. Um, when I was down in Florida, I was really uh, driven to get a robotics program started because I really believed in it. And after looking through a variety of programs I decided on the first myself. So we had a FTC team, which is the first tech challenge coming down there. And we also started our own FRC team. That was quite a bit of challenge, especially uh, seeing how it was kind of a, a grassroots movement of myself and a few very select few others. Uh, that experience really gave me insight uh, into what first as, a, as, a, as an entity really does. And we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, first off, uh, like it says up here, I'm the new FRC coach. I'm also the new engineering teacher here at the school. Uh, Kellen Hill is our lead team mentor, and we're going to talk uh, in later slides about what mentors are specifically. Really what they are is knowledge banks for your kids to access, to be able to gain the skills necessary for them to be competitive in, the, in today's market. Uh, we also have Rick Folia, who's a mentor. He also works for Automation Direct, which is one of our largest sponsors and one of the largest sponsors of First Health County. Uh, we'll talk about them as well. Um, we have our booster board, which is Marty Camella, Don Rowe, Robin Chapman, Tracy Vega, and Karen Owens. And you will, you will hear from most of them tonight. You will see most of them, and they are the uh, really the driving force behind a lot of this. I mean, I, I put in a lot of time as a teacher, but it would not be possible at all without uh, booster members and, of course, parents like yourselves taking an interest in what your kids want to do and what they enjoy. It wouldn't be possible without you guys and them. So just to talk about a team overview, uh, basically, I myself am up here at the top, I'm the FRC coach. Uh, lead mentor would be Kellen Hill, like I said, he's over here on the side. And then we have a coach and we uh, factor down into different leads. All of these team leads are students that are currently here in this room, Western Regulators room. The business team lead, if I call you out, we stand up, business team lead. 
Kyle Rowe right back there. Uh, electrical team lead, Chase. Programming team lead, Rodney's behind the camera back there. And then scouting lead, there we go, Christian Cooper. All right. Uh, what that means, what this means to you is uh, while I'm at the top of this organization, what you need to understand about FIRST is FIRST is a program set up to make your kids into leaders and to help them to succeed. Towards that end, it is understood that it is not an adult or a parent or a teacher organization. This is not me living out some long lost fantasy of going in and destroying people with robots or getting my name up on a billboard, and it's the same for the booster club, it's the same for the lead mentor. We are here specifically for one reason, and that is to support your children, to make them, uh, to give them the chance to be as excellent as they know that they are. That is what FIRST is all about. So, being that this, uh, the way this is set up, this is a student-run organization. The students are in every facet of what we do here, and because of that, it really, opens up their eyes into what they can expect in the real world. All of you, all of you know you have real jobs in the real world and it's hard to express to your children exactly what that entails, putting in work, putting in hours, and putting in effort, and, and really making it something that you're driven to do. This allows them to get a taste of that. But in addition to giving them a taste of it, it also rewards them for it. There's tons of scholarships, like I said, we'll talk more about first later, but there are tons of scholarships and opportunities and internships and people and connections to be made by being part of this organization. And this organization rewards students, and it rewards students who put themselves out there and who do the work and who put in the effort. Um, so as you can see, like, while I am in charge, I am more facilitated than anything else. And that goes for all the mentors as well. We, this program becomes what it wants to be based on what the students want it to be. So if the students want it to be a championship, flagship program, that is what it would be. If they don't want it to be that, then it won't be. So, what is FRC? First Robotics Challenge. First is a, uh, not a corporation, but a, 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 a I guess not a profit. Yeah, not a profit. Um, basically, yeah, they are they are huge with some uh, high level sponsors. I know last year Qualcomm was a big one. I think they are again. But I mean, we're talking uh, a who's who of tech companies support first, and I mean they it's it's their farm. That's where they go when they are looking for future prospects, and future talent. They go to these competitions. When you go to these competitions, you see. Uh, presidents, vice presidents, heads of human resources, walking around, walking in the pits, talking to kids, sponsoring awards, bringing kids up, talking about them, getting to know them. It's, you make connections here of people who are actually in the business world. Uh, towards that end, FRC is their branch of robotics. There are, uh, starting at the elementary school, uh, there is FLL, which is the first LEGO League, which is LEGO Robots, where kids compete and uh, accomplish different missions and steps up. It goes up to FTC, which is First Tech Challenge, which is full of 18 by 18 by 18 robots. And then you go up to FRC, which are giant, you know, 150, 180 pound robots wheeling around on a basketball court. Uh, FRC is a, a international uh, program. So we compete not only against teams here in Georgia, but we compete against teams nationally for just about every state. And we compete against teams internationally. Uh, the competition I went to last year down in Orlando, Florida, we were bracketed between two teams from Turkey. Uh, we lost to a team from the Netherlands. They are teams from all over the world who come in here and compete. And so when we talk about uh, going to these competitions, your students will meet these people. They will for bonds and French bonds. And first is very uh, supportive of encouraging those bonds. They, they want our team to talk to other teams. They want us to talk to teams in Germany, and teams in, in Turkey, and teams in Brazil, and to build those bonds and, and like mentor through them. Um, so going down to uh, the first organization, we've talked about that, uh, STEM requirements. So a lot of you guys have questions about STEM. And we have had a lot of meetings, a lot of nights up here to try and explain them and make them as simple as possible. And the real, real truth is they're, they, they can be simple, but it's really hard to put that on paper. So the STEM requirements. STEM requirements, you are required to complete a season of competition. You can do that in a variety of different ways. You can also do that through FRC. If you're going to do that through FRC, you need to attend 75% of the meetings. And the way we keep track of that is we have a time clock system. When the student comes in, 
they clock in. When the student leaves, they clock out. We will take and we will compile all those hours. Now, every time they're working on something, they're clocked in. At the end of the day, we are going to compile all those hours and it's just a straight percentage. Okay? Uh, they also have to compete in a competitive event. Okay? So if they are going to compete in BRITS, the two-day event that is coming up, and they have put in 75% the of time, they will meet their season of competition requirements. If they go and they come in January for the true first season, which we'll run, which we'll talk about that here in a minute, from January to April, we'll talk about it. Yeah. About one second, yeah. 75% um, of the meetings of the time scheduled for practices, they'll be here. And then they will go to uh, the regional competitions, district competitions, and as far as we progress, they will keep going and they will meet the requirement that way. If you have other questions about the STEM requirements, that's more of a one on one. If you want to catch me after after this or call me up after school or send me an email or something like that, we can talk about it specifically. Uh, time commitments. And this is something that all of you guys need to understand. This is uh, the way FRC works is in January, at the very beginning of January, we will all go down to Georgia Tech and they will have a reveal party. This reveal party is across the entire world. They're letting everyone know exactly what the game is for this year at that time. Once they let us know, that starts off a six week build season. So in six weeks, we have to go from absolutely nothing, not even an idea, to a fully fledged robot. Okay? That's a lot of effort. That is a lot of work. That is a lot of time. Okay? When we say a lot of time, a, a minimum kind of uh, time commitment would be right now we do uh, four to seven on Mondays, we do four to nine on Thursdays. When this season rolls around, it will probably be four to nine on Mondays, four to nine on Thursdays, and we'll probably pick a weekend day to come up here and work as well. And that is the minimum. It is a huge time commitment. So if your student is also interested in doing uh, sports or something like that during that time period, it is very tough. That's not to say that you can't be part of FRC and part of other things. We have lots of band members in here. We have lots of members who are in sports. We have lots of members who do a lot of things. But during that January to March, it will be very, very difficult for you to be able to do more than one thing because this is so time consuming. Uh, what ends up happening is we build this robot in six weeks, we then take it and we stick it in a giant plastic baggie. We then send it off after the six weeks to our first competition date so that they know that we have not touched it and every other team has to do the same thing. Uh, we'll talk about those competition dates here in a second, but we get to uh, we'll do two district competitions. If we win there, we progress on to the state finals, and then if we win there, we progress on to internationals. We'll talk about that here in a second. So let me just pause for a second because I know there was a lot in here and there's some critical pieces, but do you guys have any questions, general questions? You've probably heard a lot of the STEM talk, right? Do we have parents or students in here that aren't in the STEM program that are part of the team? Because we should talk a little bit about that, that you don't yeah. have to be in STEM. You do not have to be in STEM, absolutely not. Um, in fact, we are part of, part of the, I do not, put this way, being new, uh, if you come into a successful program, you don't want to change a lot of things. I do not want to change a lot of things. I'm very happy with how successful the program is, and I want to keep that success going. However, I do believe that there are a few areas of improvement that we can change, and one of them is bringing in, up to this point, we have had a hard time finding, um, we've been trying to take kids who have specialties in one area and convert them to having specialties in other areas. What I mean by that is, like graphic design. We have a couple kids who are good with graphic design. They're also good at nine other things that they're doing. Or uh, videography, or pictures, photography, that kind of stuff. We have several clubs and programs here on campus dedicated solely to those programs, but their students aren't in STEM, so they have not thought of FRC as an option. We're hoping to change that. We'll be doing some visits to those classes. We'll be talking about some of those students. Um, but if you're not part of STEM, this is still a great program to be a part of. If you are uh, not in an engineering class, this is still a great program to be a part of because you get access to not only the workspace and the knowledge of all these mentors. And when I say these mentors, these mentors are some smart, smart people. I mean, these are professional engineers, these are professional uh, workers. These are, some of our mentors are in college at Georgia Tech currently to become engineers. Uh, we have mentors all over the United States who specialize in a variety of, wide variety of different things, programming, uh, metallurgy, CAD, all of these people are here to support your students to be as successful and to gain as much knowledge as possible. So even if you're not in the STEM program, this is still a great thing to be a part of. 
there's absolutely no restriction from you being a part of it at all. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So you have to have 75% time commitment to catch a compete? No. Season of competition, if you want to use this as your STEM competition, you have to have 75% and compete in one competition. Let's say that you uh, you already have your season of competition. You do something else that you, you know, earlier in the year or later in the year that you care about or you're part of TSA and you compete that way. And you still come to a majority of the meetings and you still are interested, but you just don't have that time commitment down. You know, you have other things at that time that, that mean you can't come 75%. If you still come and you still put in the effort, you still put in the work, and I'm still sure that you are dedicated to being a part of this team, and you are going to say, you know, uh, scouting. Scouting is a huge, huge component of our competitions. We can never get enough data going on scouting. And if you come to me and you show me that you're committed, I'm never going to say no to taking you along to, to help scout. Or if you are part of one of the teams, and while you haven't been able to make all, all the meetings, you're a, a valuable part of that team, and so when something goes down, I know I can rely on you to fix it. Then, of course, I'm going to take you with me. But as far as it applying towards your season of competition, we'll have to have a, like a one-on-one -on -one talk about that because you're not meeting that 75% qualifier. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? <clears throat> For me. All right, so. Role of mentors. Like I've said already, uh, mentors, guys, I can't stress enough. Like, if you come to, let me stop saying like so much, that's embarrassing. If you come to my classroom, if you come to the uh, nightly meetings with STEM night, the eighth grade, the ninth grade of the house, or any of that stuff, you've heard me talk about the direction I want to take this program. That's my engineering program. And that is the direction of getting the kids out into the real world, getting them to see uh, what people actually do every day in these jobs that they say that they want. Um, mentors are those people. These are the people that have the jobs that your children want. Or at least they think that they want. Me, my, me personally, I, like I said, I know a bunch of you have heard this story before, but I thought I wanted to be an engineer. I was 100%. Like if you had asked me going out of high school, what are you going to be on? Engineer. What's your second choice? Engineer. Go to college. 100% engineer. Intern as an engineer. No. Not for me. I could not do it. I am not good at uh, sitting in cubicles for long periods of time. And unfortunately for me, I thought that's I thought that's what that career was. If I had, had more experience, if I'd been more worldly, if I'd gotten out more, I would have known that that was just one type of career I could have gotten through engineering. But I didn't have that education. I didn't have that experience. I don't want your students to go through that. I want your students to know what job they are actually trying for and what degree will help them get to it, not what degree they think is just going to be the rest of their lives. These mentors are people who work in the fields that your students want to be a part of. These guys are experts. When I say experts, I mean, like, I feel dumb a lot because I make a lot of dumb mistakes. I'm a pretty dumb person in my own regard. These people make me feel even dumber. They are brilliant. And they pass that along. They have such a passion not only for what they do, but for helping students. Like every single one of these people is so bought in into helping their students. I can't believe it. It, it. it makes me smile every time they come in and start talking because all they want to do is help your students. That's it. No payoff. No, no bargaining chip. No, you're going to come work for me later on when this pays. Like they just want your student to succeed in the best way possible. And you don't find people like that very often. You really don't. And the fact that we have so many of them, because we've got close to a dozen that work with our team, and every single one of them is just an outstanding person, an outstanding, uh, I mean, in my opinion, an outstanding technical genius in their field, and a great teacher. Kids need to get to know people like this in order to understand what they're going to be working with later on in their life. Um, so the role of mentors, mentors will come in, they will help. We have different mentors who specialize in portfolio, like I said before, loves working with our programming division because that's his passion. Um, Kellen Hill, the head, the lead mentor, is a jack of all trades. He's been involved in first for a long time. He's, uh, he's an engineer by trade. He just, he is, he does it all. I mean, he is Superman. Uh, you'll see him, he's on his one week of vacation. We give him a year right now. Um, but he, you will see, if you, if you become part of this program, you will see him a lot. 
to quick yeah. comment about mentors. Mentors are also officially background checked, I oh, guess, by the first organization. They spend a lot of time with your kids. And I know for incoming freshmen, that's probably a concern. Who are these strange people yeah, that, true. that are spending time with my kids? So just like the teachers are vetted fully, so are the, the mentors. They cannot spend time with the students unless they pass the full background, background check. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about uh, Team Auto. And this is last year's um, really kind of uh, accomplishment. I want to start. We'll talk about grits here in a minute because we're going to grits here in a minute. But grits, very successful there. But uh, Gainesville District win, went to Columbus, became finalist. We were state champions last year. We're on the winning lines uh, in the state final in uh, Athens. And then that got us a chance to travel all the way down to Houston for nationals. Or sorry, for internationals. Um, and when you go to internationals, that is the big leagues. You have teams there, because first is not a new thing, it has been around a long time. You have teams there that have been around for 30 years competing. You have teams that have hundreds and hundreds of members competing. It is a, it is, it's eye-opening is what it is. And uh, the thing is, we get there, and there were a few things like upon arriving at these change about organization, not so much about the robot, but about organization and planning and strategy. And uh, I do feel that uh, having that success last year has really given us an edge in being successful again this upcoming year. And I do plan to go back to Houston again for uh, for Worlds this time, only this time we should probably, uh, maybe we'll probably should have win it. <laughs> um, but that brings us to, if I'm not mistaken, our next slide is all of its schedule. All right. So uh, these are some of the events. Now, like I said, this is a student-led organization. So the students have a hand in everything that we do. Um, they choose the outreach. They choose the programs. They choose the places to go. They choose what we do. Um, the Atlanta Maker Fair is held. It'll be actually this weekend um, down in Atlanta. They changed it year on a high school campus this year. It's uh, Industrial Freight Depot. Freight Depot. Freight Depot. Thank you. Um, we have a booth there that we're working on filling out and getting everything in. Uh, the opportunity to go to that has already passed. We've already found the paperwork, got the, everything set up, but that is something to be looking forward to next year. Um, Grits, that is our first robotics competition for this school year, um, and it is the only robotics competition for the rest of this calendar year. Uh, it is held in Gainesville at um, Riverside Military Academy, um, and it is it is an event. It's great to see. It is a mini competition, and we love it because it really gives you, uh, especially the freshmen coming in or new members that want to participate, it gives you an idea of what it's all about. It is a, it is uh, it is it's just like a district event, which you will experience later on in the season. Um, but it really gives you an idea of it kind of gives you a training run of what to go through. And it also allows you to meet some of the local teams. And that's one of the most important things about this is your kid networking with other kids in the area doing the same thing. You would think when we go to a competition, you know, you'd be shooting eyes at everyone around you and, you know, you'd be, oh, we can take them down or anything like that. First, really encourages something called gracious professionalism. And that is the idea that you can compete and not be uh, a total jerk about it. Um, so when you go, teams are constantly helping one another, teams are constantly talking to one another, teams are, they're trading buttons, they're, they're getting to know one another, they're, 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 you know, exchanging phone numbers and stuff, becoming friends, and then when you start competing, a team that you compete against this round might be your alliance partner next round. You're always constantly switching, so there is no animosity between teams. Um, there is a lot of camaraderie between teams, and it gives you an idea of who you, as a you know, as a Lions partner, as who you want to pick to help you out later on down the road. Uh, towards that end, like we really get to know the teams around us um, pretty well and, and form bonds there, and that's that's something that can help them because all these kids are the same age; they're all going to be going to college together, they're all going to be entering the workforce together, and you can never have too many contacts. 2017, 2018 events. Like I said, in January we go to the kickoff down at Georgia Tech, and then we come back and we build. Uh, so that way you'll be receiving information, of course, uh, detailed information about all these before they happen. 
But the, uh, the kickoff event is a little crazy. We go down, all the robotics teams go down to Georgia Tech. They do the reveal, which is they show us the game film and what the game is. Uh, they've already re released a teaser of the game, which we'll talk about later. Um, but then you get so excited they give you the kit parts, you come back and then you just start building, because that's when the clock starts. Uh, we then, after our six week build season, we have our uh, two to three district competitions this year. It looks like we're going to be doing two district competitions. Uh, they switched up how the district competitions are done. It's now done by a lottery system. But we have already put in our, our lottery bids and we've already been awarded our competitions. So we'll talk about that on the next slide. Uh, that brings us to the beginning of April. Those state or those district competitions are here in March. State competition is typically the first weekend in April. Uh, it is in Athens, Georgia, in the, in the Stegman Coliseum there on uh, UGA's campus, and it is an event. I mean, you have you have all these teams from all over Georgia who have been uh, competitive or champions in their district events, and they come to play. Um, it was a great event last year, it was a great event this year. It's a huge thing. You can go. I would, I would highly encourage you guys as parents to come and even if you, uh, we're going to talk about parent volunteering here a second, even if you don't volunteer, coming to, to watch your kid uh, compete and participate. It's hard not to get drawn into the excitement and into just everyone. It, it gets you on your feet. It really does. I uh, mean, the entire environment. So after the state championship, if you uh, if you succeed, and, there, and by succeed I mean there's a variety of ways to succeed. You can win flat out in the competition, or there are several awards during the uh, during the actual competition that they award best for the team, um, uh, the chairman award. Uh, there's just a, a ton of different awards that they award uh, to students and to teams. Some of those awards also allow you to progress onto Worlds in Houston. Uh, we won't need those to win, obviously. But that brings us to the World Championship in Houston, Texas. There's actually two World Championships. It's gotten so big, they split it up. One is in Houston and one is in Detroit. We feel we won that battle by going to Houston as opposed to Detroit. Yeah, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, Detroit's on its way back up. It's just, I think Houston might be a little bit better. Um, speaking of our 2017, 2018 events, Here's our game teaser, we won't, we won't show that right now, but uh, the game is our first power-up. It seems to have some sort of 8-bit gaming motif. We're uh, pretty excited about it. Uh, we've all been brainstorming and guessing what it might be. Uh, our first event is going to be March 2nd through the 4th, and that would be at Gainesville. It once again be at uh, Riverside Academy. That was the first one we put in for because it's close and makes it easy. The second one will be at Dalton, and that is March 8th through 10th. We did that because one, it's, it's Closer than, uh, closer than some of the other events, and two, it allows us a little bit of downtime between it and the end of the season. I am going to mention at this point, um, we will be getting you pricing and everything on those beforehand about going. Are you guys going to cover this later or should I talk about it? Probably. We'll cover it over. Okay. That might have been fine. Yeah, fine. Gainesville is, is a travel competition. We'll travel daily to and from, but the Dalton event is an overnight stay. And I just want to jump in here. I'm Tracy and I help uh, do our travel plans. Um, on the previous slide, you want to note in your family calendars that state championship is always during the week of spring break. And that happens on the end of the week, but the team practices during the week. So you might want to make a mental note of that. That is an optional event. Um, but it caught me by surprise uh, a couple years ago. And then the Houston event um, is at the end of April. So um, you might want to go ahead and pencil these dates in to your family calendars um, if your student would like to take advantage of those opportunities. Would you be emailing out these dates or should yes. you be writing these dates down? Uh, you'll get plenty you of notes. If you're like me, I write them down anyway. <laughs> you'll get lots of emails, and we'll cover some of the dates in detail, but also on the team website which will get a URL for. We've got a full calendar for all of these dates, for when the dates start and when they end, or the competition start and end. Um, and you can add that and port it into your smartphone, and it will stay up to date as we change things, because calendars do change, unfortunately. Yes. You mean as opposed to the website? Yes. On the team1746.com website, after tonight's meeting, we'll post this presentation. Um, as well as any kind of notes that come up as a result of tonight's conversation. 
Um, we're also recording a video. If you wanted to hear what the conversation was, you can play back. Hopefully we're talking loud. I know, right? Uh, that's never been a problem. But you should be able to play it back. And so if there's something you missed, don't fret. You can go back with him anyway. But also you notice at the top of all these slides, there's contact information. You can reach out to whoever the speaker was and ask your question there or just get your clarification on things there. These are the district events for this year. That is, we will go to those, and that's where we will compete to see if we can uh, make it to see. Um, that's a good question, and I'd love to just give a straight up answer to it. We're still evaluating. Honestly, as far as season, like we're talking about season of competition, we're being part of this team. So those are two very different things. So, Season of competition states that you have to come to 75% and go to one competition, so that would be one of these. But if you're going to be a part of the team, we would hope that you wouldn't go to Gainesville and be like, done, and check out, you know, obviously. We just, you know, to make it season of competition, we want to keep it uh, kind of fair and balanced. Those of you who aren't in STEM, and I keep saying season of competition, don't worry about it. It is something that your child does not have to jump through. Um, but there are, in STEM, you have the season of competition, and there are a variety of ways to fill it. We just want to make sure that kids competing at FRC do a uh, equivalent amount of work compared to some of the other events, like the TSA or OSA or some of those things. And that's not a problem because FRC is so involved that we don't want to make them do three or four times the amount of work that some of the other students in the program do. Any other questions? All right, this is Mr. Scorch's last slide for now. <laughs> We're going to move into another topic slightly. Ooh. So before we transition again. Oh, wait, no, not on that slide. Hold on. You have one more? No, I don't have another slide. I don't have time to talk about it. Oh, well, well, before I forget. All right, um, so towards grits, I was supposed to talk about this during the grits slide, and I completely went over my head. Uh, I'm in the process right now of getting my bus license. It is not something that I ever plan to do. Maybe it's a fallback career. I don't know. Um, but the real reason I'm doing it is because transportation is, is difficult. It is tough and it is expensive. It's a thorn in our side. So uh, I'm going to do that so that hopefully, come um, district events, instead of having to ask parents to shuttle or drive, we can load up on a bus and we can cruise on over there and make it happen. Until that happens, though, we need parent volunteers. Um, we really appreciate our parent volunteers that volunteer now. We just are afraid of burning them out because there's a core group that are working themselves near to death, and it, we don't want that. We want to spread the load. I know that you guys care about your kid, and you want them to be successful, and you want to care about what they care about. And so if they are interested in this, uh, for Brits, which is not this weekend, but next weekend, we are still desperately in need of parent drivers um, that can take their student and maybe a couple extra students from here to Gainesville and then back. We are really missing uh, the evening of the first Saturday, that's the 28th, and then the morning of the Sunday, which is the 29th. Um, we need some seats. If we don't have parent volunteers to transport, we don't really have any other option. We have to just start paring down who can go based on necessity. So if you would like to volunteer, we really, really, really appreciate it. It would really help us uh, be a successful team. And like I said, we have things in place now that I'm working towards to make it to where that won't be as necessary going into the future. But I, mean, I just got here a couple months ago. That's going to take me a little bit of time to do that. If you feel like you could help us out in that regard, that's going to be really, really appreciate it. If you'll contact Ms. Priego, she will get you set up and let you know everything, all the, all the, all the check boxes and everything like that, and get you set up. Okay. If you do want to volunteer to drive, uh, there is that need the evening of the 28th, the morning of the 29th. Just look back into your email inbox, find one of the emails from Team Auto about grits. It's going to be an email with a red button you can push. It says, Parent Volunteers, click here to volunteer to drive. And that's all you have to do to sign up, and then I'll provide you all the information that you need. And if you're not getting those emails, Tracy is also the person to talk to, and she can add you tonight and share that information. That's almost like an object lesson about burning out parents. Yeah. 
That's right. All right, that was it for me. All right, thank you, Mr. Storage. All right, I'm going to kick us just off into a little conversation about the Booster Club. Um, the Booster Club does a lot for the teams, as Mr. Storage had talked about, but um, for those of you brand new to the team, you're in good company because the Booster Club's only one year old. <laughs> We've only been around for one year. Um, we're kind of learning things, and so this part two of the meeting tonight is going to be about some things we need to fix that didn't go so well last year from the booster standpoint. Um, but with that being said, we have a lot of really strong talent in our booster members and especially on the board that have helped to cover some of the gaps that the teachers and the staff here at Trump, Precise Central, have just not been able to provide. And that's really, in a nutshell, what the purpose of the booster club is. We provide all of the extras that the school can't provide, or in some cases that parents themselves can't provide. There's a lot going on. Um, we are only successful, though, with the help of all of the parents on the team. So we'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. But we wanted to highlight a couple bullets here, and I'm going to introduce some other speakers up to talk about that. We figure it's real important for you guys to understand where our budget is. I remember being in your shoes many years ago and just being blown away by how much money this club requires. Specifically, how much I needed to stroke a check for. So, in just full disclosure mode here, we're going to share all of that with you so that you see what that is. We'll give you information on how to join, um, and that'll be happening towards the end of the year. We'll get information tonight, talk about where our funding comes from, and then, like Mr. Storage was alluding to, the, the necessary role of parents on the team. This team cannot do what it does without parents. We certainly can't be a state champion without the role of parents. And then, again, and this is very broad range, right? Tracy, Tracy's helped pull some information to get here about what would be typical student costs. We're using our previous year's experience and applying it to what we think will happen this year. Um, but that's going to be really important for you guys to understand, especially as you plan your, your budgets for your household and things like that. So, I want to just start with what the costs are and what the benefits are for being a member of the Booster Club. We really do have three tiers. Um, we've got a, a student tier, which really is the parent is the member. Um, we have an alumni tier, and then we have a community tier. Most of the focus, though, for what we talk about happens in this left side with the student tier. And so uh, for this coming up year, we have designated $200 as the membership fee. That's just to be in the booster club. And listed out some bullets here. And again, you don't have to write all this down. Um, you can take a picture of your phone if you want to, but this is all on the website as well. But just to give you guys an idea about what you get for that, you become a voting member of the club, so help to make decisions, help to make changes, um, like we're doing at the end of this meeting. Um, you get to participate in the club events. It helps to fund some of the necessary parts that are, that are more consumable for the robot, because um, we have those expenses happening every year. Um, you get to be a part of our email notifications, and they are very informational. For all of you new parents, it's, you're probably going to feel like it's information overload until right before the event where you will appreciate the information that was sent to you. Yeah, I say a lot of the returning parents that were able to have. Um, we do hold a, a banquet at the end of every year, too, and your, all of your fees are covered for that as well. Um, and we're changing, we're actually increasing the number of t-shirts that we're providing to our students. Our team, as Mr. Storich had mentioned, is a world-class team. And in order to compete in some of these competitions, you need to have four changes of clothes. You just have to. We were trying to get by on two t-shirts over the past couple years and then three. You really need four to do that. So we're making sure that the booster club fees includes that. And we've got a fifth t-shirt that's more of a professional t-shirt. Probably something very similar to what I'm wearing right now that your students can use when they go and speak to um, professional organizations, whether that's businesses that are in the engineering sector um, or fundraising opportunities, outreach events, but also maybe for photo opportunities. For example, the team was invited to go speak to the Board of Education um, to receive an accolade for being state champions. And this is the kind of thing that we want them to wear as opposed to a, a t-shirt that might have been written from working in the pits during one of the competitions. And then as you move to the right, which those probably don't apply so much to you, but I want you to know that these are here. Um, alumni get to, say, they get to have the same voting rights and they get some of the benefits and then community members that want to participate in help drive and steer the Booster Club also have some privileges that are associated with that. Do you guys have any questions about anything on this slide? Nope. 
So now I'm going to invite Don Rowe up, and he will speak to you. Um, Don is the vice president of the Booster Club. Come on. Don's the vice president of the Booster Club. Good morning. Um, so for, for the great team, for the great parts, next morning. All right. And, and uh, the tears Marty showed really uh, are really the, the uh, student fees are really the smallest part of the funding. Um, for this year, calendar year, we're going to be about 40000 roughly, about 40000 for all the parts, the uh, travel and expenses in for the year. And um, bro broken down, um, most of, most of the, uh, that cash flow is not from the student fees. It, it is from uh, sponsorships, and, uh, including uh, cash sponsorships, uh, the in-kind sponsorships where a company would donate materials or supplies, and um, uh, grants, and, uh, and then some of you, the new, new parents, uh, new students, um, the Booster Club is a non-profit 401c3, 501c3, I'm sorry, and um, my company is uh, XL Captain, and they they will match uh, some of your large employers that have a, if uh, you were to, someone were to make a donation to the uh, organization Booster Club, you can, in some cases, companies will match dollar for dollar. Um, so we're always looking for um, opportunities to uh, to uh, raise the money if, if your employer has a uh, program. Um, so, so the, the, the road, it's like an NASCAR uh, car, you know, it's, it's filled with sponsors, right? So, so uh, the, the different sponsors um, have provided different levels of funding and then they would get featured in different ways. Uh, some of them get featured more prominently and um, we have different tiers of sponsorship depending on um, how much um, how much a, a, a business or maybe a family or something would want to uh, donate. And um, the the supporter, it, run, it starts at $100 and then it moves up. Uh, that's a, a supporter level, then it goes to bronze, silver, gold. Um, and um, we, we've had some, like Automation Direct, they're, they're probably the top every year. I mean, they fund the whole county in a lot of ways, but they they are unbelievable. They're probably our most important uh, support in, in um, uh, feed funding and materials. and. Um, and then these were these were the larger ones for um, this past year. Um, we also have we have also branched out into other ways to raise funds. And this past year, uh, we've started to support um, helping out at uh, Verizon concerts uh, where they're doing some. Uh, Shuttling, food shuttling and stuff, and, and that's we've been uh, supporting some other clubs for that. And they they benefit um, Team Auto, um, PayPal. How does that? Are we being able to send out a link to your family members if they want to support the team? Um, we actually have a favorable status with PayPal because we're a five one c three, where we get breaks on the fees that PayPal charges regular businesses. So it's a great way at a very low cost to raise some money. Um, and then some uh, toner cartridge, uh, recycling. But that was a way that we raised a little bit of money from that, right? That's, that's, that's actually a thing that we will uh, you guys. You just got it. Okay. okay, so you'll get more information on this. Yes. Right. So do not throw away your ink or toner cartridges <laughs> in businesses. Please, your homes. please do not. Some of those are worth a lot of money. We're hoping to have that be a fundraiser for you. Then um, the last one, which we were super excited about, which we were which was very successful this past summer, was the Auto Buyers uh, Summer Camp. And um, outreach, uh, extending the name, the reach of the 
students to, uh, to uh, young, younger students. A uh, very successful program this past summer. And we I think it will carry on, right? I mean, when you're, you've got the well, yeah, so I'm, I'm Kyle. Like, I'm a money juice here as a business lead. And so Autobotics was, like the father just said, it was a camp going for elementary schools and middle schoolers over the summer. But lately, we have just actually been approved to start running winter camps as well for this. And we're branching out to do more camps in a year and more camps over breaks and weekends too. And so the first Autobots camp is actually a really big success for us and raised over $7,000 for the team just in this first year alone. So we're really looking to build on that and to improve upon that with the new winter camp we're doing, the summer camp next year, and every camp following that. But it's going to be a huge fundraising opportunity for us and your students can actually get credit for their membership fees and then you get volunteer hours as well through this program. So it's a huge opportunity for both the team, your student, and the school as a whole. And we got a, a nice grant uh, to, to fund that. And we bought a bunch of uh, VEX robotic kits. And uh, we preserved those. <laughs> so that, and it's important. I mean, they, they built the robots. It was unbelievable what, what occurred in the um, how the uh, students, um, they, had to, they had to be creative. They had to, they had uh, two weeks, four weeks of uh, working with young, younger students, keeping them engaged. And just what they learned and how they engaged these young people was just uh, an unbelievable uh, result. And all the feedback we got was like, super positive. And we think by promoting this earlier and promoting it, uh, we, maybe for the winter, we, we think that this could be a real, um, a real long-term opportunity to, um, to again, to extend the reach of um, uh, robotics in, in the county and a little bit beyond the area. Um, and then part of the road, uh, autobotics, the, the, the hardest part was just getting everything started up this past year. Um, but going forward, uh, there'll be opportunities, depending on the time of year that the camps are run. Um, we both need parental help with um, uh, maybe getting your students here, getting supplies, and just support. And um, again, as Mr. Scourge said, um, this is student driven. The, the board and the booster club, um, we're all here to support the students and their success. And uh, these kind of opportunities, again, they go beyond the, uh, the school environment. They're learning uh, how to work with others, how to lead, uh, stuff that you don't get in the textbook. So again, it, there's, there's a lot of great benefits to, to these, uh, these kids. We like to think of ourselves as the good kind of dealers. <laughs> right. Well, and, and it's also, this is kind of also a, um, like a, a sports program is having these feeder clubs. You know, a lot of baseball and football and stuff. And, and I think there's a mission in the county and in North and in the state to, to uh, drive robotics and things like that down all the way to younger levels. And, this is a great way to facilitate that up in this area. And we want to be, we want, uh, we want us to be a leader up in this area for this kind of stuff. And uh, we, and a lot of the success too will uh, depend upon word of mouth advertising. And we think, like I said, the people who participate in this feedback was overwhelmingly positive. And we think there's great opportunities to uh, to expand it more in the future. But it's going to take. Your help too to make it successful. Yes. Are you going to allow the students to receive letter again this year, like in the last year? Like yes. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions about? Again, these are just different aspects. We need. Um, you know, this is this is a you know large family, you know, team and, and community. You know, everyone's help and input is appreciated and, and covered. Okay. All right. Any questions? Any other questions for Don? More to come on this too. This is probably one of our, our biggest fundraising. It probably is. 
but oh, yeah. the biggest one. Um, and we definitely need your help doing that. All right, thank you, Don. Um, I want to introduce Karen. Karen's going to come up and talk about parent involvement on the team, and that seems like we're harping over the same thing, but she's got some extra details um, to provide here. And if you have questions about any of these, this is a good time to raise your hand and um, make sure we get those answers for you. Hey, I'm Karen. Um, I am one of the board members. I do a lot of the real thing that's behind my thing, so we'll get into that in a minute. But when they talk about the mentoring, if you know if your um, work or what you, you do as a living or you actually have resources for that, you know, let somebody know so we can have you maybe potentially be a mentor like what Dusty was typically about telling what you do what we need and those types of things. I'm not a good mentor because I don't have an engineering degree, but I have access to my work where we do a lot of environmental things, which would be a great example to teach the kids that type of engineering, environmental engineering. So if you have some type of like that, please get in touch with somebody. Um, and then that way we can maybe put you in place somewhere. And don't just think engineering is the only thing we care about. Uh, business, marketing, uh, advertisement, uh, medicine, we don't care. If you are an expert in something, we will take it. We can find a place for it, I promise. So, so that's one way you can volunteer. And I know um, for new parents, this might not be fully understood, but there is a game basically of what the, the kids build a robot to perform. And they score points, and you'll, you'll learn more about that. Um, as a new parent, a couple years ago, I had no idea what this program was. Went to a competition and was blown away. There is a game field that has, I think one had a castle, bridges, boats. This year had a ship that they, you know, had to put in the fuel to, to fly. So for us to be successful, we have to build a robot to perform those tasks, but we also have to practice. Um, now the robot is put up and we can't really use it, but I do believe we can make a second robot that is something that they can use and they practice with. So if you're pretty handy, help instruct some of the things that we need to practice. Um, please let us know, because we did lose one of our really great resources. They had a senior last year. Um, so we are going to be in need for somebody that can build some of the props. And it doesn't have to completely match, because when you go to these competitions, if you can go to grids, you'll get a little taste of it. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be able to give us the chance to to function the uh, the function the task that the kids have to do. So like one they had to shoot, they had to build a robot to shoot into a funnel. Just to be a funnel, that's all we need. Just to make sure that the dimensions and everything like that. So if that's a way that you can help, again, please let us know. Um, okay, meal orders. We know the time commitment these kids are Y'all have just been aware of it, especially your parents. Um, you might not realize how much that they are here, but they are here a lot. And after school, it's not o'clock. It's a very long time. So what we try to do is organize meals um, so that your kid is eating something decent, not pizza, because I know on the off-season, I think the kids have eaten a lot of pizza lately. Um, so last year, my goal was to come in and stop that. Um, give. You know, it's not anything fancy. I work, so I can't go home and cook a huge meal and bring it to the kids. I wish I could, I just don't have the time. Um, so we created a schedule, asked parents to pick a date, bring food. Um, if we didn't have one, I made sure that food was there. The kids would pay me, and we moved on. This year, we're doing it a little bit different. We're going to do it where we are ordering food for everybody or you can opt out if you need to. But I will need parents to help me pick up the food orders, bring them to the school at a certain time, um, and make sure to deliver that. So if that's something that you can do, I would really, really appreciate it. And I don't know if we're gonna, if we can go into the meal plan or not. I'll speak a little bit about that. Okay, okay. Um, now if you would love to cook and have the time, it is a little bit cheaper, some meals, and feed, because I think how many kids do we potentially have this year? 
a very no-no. They will not be allowed to compete, and I'm not sure if they will be penalized in the future well, if they're caught. We will, we will get, like, that's, let's just say that's a, that's a, that's a, because that is a, I get involved in the principal's office, we have a long discussion about the future of the club kind of thing, so please. And every year we have an 18-year-old student say, but I'm 18 years old, I'm an adult, it doesn't matter. It does not. We're going to follow the rule of the school, yes. right, Mr. Storch? Absolutely. And then there is to help enforce that, that would be great too. Um, but I don't think we've not, we've not had that problem lately, so... I'll jump in here. The good news about GRITS, if you have signed up to be a driver to take kids from here to Gainesville, you can pick them up and drop them off at Gainesville and leave. If you have signed up to drive your own student, then um, you will need to, I'm letting the coach know which students that, those that are being driven to and from by their parent, uh, but you will have to sign out with coach at the end of the event. And if you are a driver, we're going to get you all the necessary information um, that you need for the event. And to put your mind at ease, we do ask for all of our parent volunteer drivers to fill out a form noting that they have a current license and what that number is and where the current insurance is for the vehicle. So we take that step um, to help assure that we've got a safe trip over there and back. And we do also check going, who's not going, um, we take a note, if not a sign prior, who's going with what car, so that we can have a, a check and balance at these competitions. Now, when we leave, um, and sometimes, depending on your day and how you can come, the, the finals are really exciting, and that might be the only time you can come, and it would make sense that your child brought home with you. Now, they might want to ride home with the team, because if they won, they're going out to dinner, they're excited. They want to stay together in group, that's fine too. We just need to know that ahead of time that you can check out with him um, and we can check and balance our team and not be trying to find your child in a facility so that we can leave. And once, and once again, hopefully, this is fingers crossed. Ritz will be the last event that uh, we have to have parents on to drive. I, can, Obviously, I can't even Houston. imagine you how many of us to drive. Some of us, unfortunately, have to drive a carbon trailer to Houston. Right. Thank and you. that's the thing about the trailer. <laughs> the trailer is is something that we are, we did lose the person that, that called that, that for us. Um, so if you have a truck or a vehicle that can tow that, I do believe it does have a then specific you have a, pin. You have to have a brake controller. Uh, on your, wired into your truck, which is a nine pin adapter, and you cannot go from the four pin, you know, you cannot go from the four pin to the nine pin the other way. But we need a, a vehicle that has a nine pin adapter, or else we will be renting a uh, a van or a truck to do it for us going forward, which makes sense. So if you, if that's something that you know your area that you can help us, um, just let us know as well. Um, and also going back to chaperones, I think that word is, makes you feel like, oh, I'm just going to go babysit. This is a great group of kids. They are very enjoyable to be around. Um, it's honest. You're not looking, you're, you're not worrying where anybody is. There might be a, a moment that you're just like, okay, everybody's here. We're, we're great. You're not going there to actually have to babysit. They're very responsible. Um, they're very into their tasks and what their their purpose is on the team. Um, and they take it pretty serious. So it's actually, to me, an honor to be there at the, at, at the competitions with kids. So I don't want you to feel like you're sitting there facing because it, it's, it's, it's different than just shot. Um, autobotics, now the kids, like we said, the, the camp is ran by the kids. Um, and I'm not sure we'll talk about this later or not, but if you do sign up for the week, you can earn money towards your dues for the next year. So I didn't realize we were doing the winter camp. Just, but let's we'll say... Yeah, just, just got okay. okay. So let's say you, um, your kid works the summer camp. That money will go to your 2008. Not... Actually, it's 2018. If your kid works 2018 summer, your dues will go to 2019. So the autobotics camp for um, credit to 
together these dudes are kind of past unless it's now with the winner. But but there is a what's that amount? It depended on how much participation they had. Tracy, do you remember off the top of your head? It was $25 per week. $25 a week for most of the camp counselors. Most of the students. $25 a week. $25 per week for the camp. Often here, $200 dues. And they also got pet breakfast and lunch. They got a t-shirt. Um, they got a t-shirt. And they got a t-shirt.
to Sparch, myself, and a couple other students going, but we need somebody to transport the robot down. And we currently do not have that available. So if anybody would like to come, I have plenty of tickets available for like multiple people to come. So if you want to bring your family, I printed out like a whole bunch of them. So uh, if you if you can, that would be really great. We would like to go and represent the team. There are going to be tons of other robotics teams down at the Maker Fair. So if you have any more questions, just talk to me after the meeting and get me What stuff. size vehicle might work to transport all the stuff? Um, I don't know what you need So like a pickup truck or a van? A, a pickup truck or a van or an SUV would work just fine. Now last year it was all in the back of a Buick, a Toyota Highlander. Um, well, we I mean, that's a mid size SUV. Yeah, the seats fold down.
can work and earn money toward that fee. Um, in terms of time, I looked at our January, February, March, and April calendars. There's about 38 practice dates, five hours at a time. It is going to be like a part-time job for your student. So student, this is warning number one. You need to manage your time. Use your time on the weekends, pay attention to your classes. When we get into competition, the dates that Coach mentioned, those are back-to-back -back weekends. It involves a Friday of missing school and Saturday and Sunday. The good news is, when we were waiting to depart for Houston, we had two great groups of kids. They were waiting for the rides to show up. One group, my heart went out to them. They circled around, they got out their math and chemistry books, oh, yeah. started doing homework together. The other group, they got a level and brought their gaming consoles. <laughs> Use your time wisely. So that's the bare minimum with time and the practices Coach talked about. See, some of these numbers are for the kids and the families that want to go all in and do everything. So I'm going to try to carve out uh, where you can add and subtract in and out of your life. The Gainesville event last year was around $90. This year, I think the maximum was $34.60 and as low as $11.60 for students. So that number is already different. But that gives you a snapshot of time from last, last season. And the amount of days last time was three, this year it's still three. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm speaking to grit dollars here. So when we did Gainesville in March, uh, I would plan around the $90 mark. And definitely three days. Then, the second event, which we know now, is Dalton. Our best estimate, using last year's number for Columbus, Georgia, was around $255. We will invoice you, the student and the parent will get this invoice on email. We will invoice you about two weeks or a week before the event. I try to get it out two weeks beforehand, and then payment due a week before we leave. So plan on these two items for your March budget. Um, if we total all these, if your student wanted to join the club and robotics, participate in both these events, we're looking at a total of $545 and a total of 44 days from start to finish. Now I have an asterisk down here that's hard to read. These any and all trip costs increase any time we have to rent a cargo van or a U-Haul to move our team equipment. So it is a big, big, big opportunity for our parents to step up and help transport that trailer or the equipment that goes inside of it. These numbers go up um, for the entire team. Usually a total between five to $800 gets spread across all the students that participate in these events. So. That is the one number that's not included in these totals. The charge for renting a cargo van, because we really want to be able to transport the train ourselves. Any questions about this initial um, trip cost? Yes, sir. Um, does the event to the 255 change? Is that just the hotel nights and the introduction of or is that include food? What, what, is it? what is it? I'm glad you're asking. <clears throat> And this is spread across all the students that elect to go and qualify to go. It would be hotel lodging. It would be for the student meals. It includes the meals for our coach and chaperones that go and stay out overnight. It goes toward any food or beverages. We, we buy, I don't know how many cases of water for the kids while they're there. It goes toward um, if we need to rent a cargo van. If there's a trip specific shirt, the kids wanted a new shirt for state championships, so that was an additional charge. And if there's any gas fees that we incur, when we go to Houston, that's a lot of gas for some of the volunteer. So we invoice the kids later or try to include that as part of our trip cost. No, but I, let me take an opportunity here. We, Throughout this schedule here for these two events, 
is about a $5,000 investment in the students. That's over and above that. Um, Automation Direct is one of our top level sponsors. Don mentioned them as a gold sponsor. They have fully covered that fee for us this year. So that's great news because that $5,000 would have been spread across your students on here. So we don't have to pay for entrance fees. I think you would ask specifically about that. That's already covered through a sponsorship. Um, and we have phenomenal support in that regard. So a lot of these fees that Tracy's talking about are things that are specific to your student. Where will your students sleep? What will your student eat? If there's something you need to wear, what will they wear? It's those kinds of expenses that we have. Let's roll forward and look at the scenario if your kid wants to go in and participate in everything that's available through Team Auto. So we carry forward the total from the previous screen. Your kid has joined the club, they've gone to two events. Um, the team practice meal plan is going to be offered for the first time this year. Last year, Karen spoke to, we had parent volunteers bring in meals. We had 29 students on the team. Michelle was a great helper um, with bringing in meals, Rolla and Karen. We had great participation in January. Uh, but as the kids can tell you, what have we ate, uh, eaten this fall, kids? Pizza. pizza. And? Pizza. And? Pizza. 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 So what we're going to offer on a month-to-month -month basis is this. We're going to count, out, count up the number of practices for that month. You can elect to opt in or opt out. If you opt in, we will invoice you at the beginning of, or the mid, like January, we'll invoice you mid-December. Payment will be due the beginning of January for the month of January. And then your kid will sign up and order their meals. It's either all in or all out. So if you opt in and your student misses practices, there's no refunds. It gets crazy trying to manage that. So if you chose to put your student into the meal plan, I counted up 38 practices, $5 a meal, that totals out $190. That's optional for you to do. If there's a third event, it sounds like we're just going to do two. Yeah. Uh, if there's a third event, we would add another trip cost, but we can go ahead and strike that number. Then, the other optional events are the state championship last season. 19 out of our 20 students elected to go. The trip was $284, and it was four days. And those are four days out of spring break. It's a crazy four days. It's a crazy fun four days. World championship to Houston, we drove. We are going to toy with the idea of flying out. But driving this past spring, 14 students elected to participate. That was invoiced at $546. Again, these are numbers you can either add into your family budget or say, you know, we're good with district events. Or we want to do one district event and one state championship event. However, state and worlds are not guaranteed. The team has a very strong record at, for qualifying for state. And worlds. So my family would just plan on those happening, and we discuss now that we have two students as to how we would participate. Um, IRI is an event that happens in July, another optional event. This is a very exclusive, prestigious event, the best in the world. Go. We have eight students in July elect to go. And that trip was invoiced at $355. And then grits this season, this is true pricing. If you are going for two days, you're a new student, you buy a shirt, about $35. If you elect to do everything, this is a ballpark of $2,210. There will be more charges if we have to rent a cargo van. This number to Houston may change depending if we fly or not. Just take a deep breath. Yeah, you can so cross on. this off your list and <laughs> subtract it from the total. So we slide right in under $2,000. Mm -hmm. The ultra low price. Of 
you guys have any other questions on this topic of the Tracy? And again, there will yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Are students allowed to miss that many days of school? Uh, they are. It's an excused absence. Oh. Just like if you were to, uh, you know, compete at a like, state championship or something like that in a sport, they're excused absences. Um, so all of their work would be able to be made up, plus the teachers will give them work ahead of time. Like we will, here at the school, we will make it work because they understand how important and how amazing this opportunity is. Um, but it does not actually count towards their attendance total. They will be, they will be the same as if they were here. The World Championship is the longest uh, amount of time, and that's because it takes two, drive, two days to drive out there. So we, this past season, we drove on a Monday and a Tuesday. They competed Wednesday through Saturday night, and then we drove on Saturday and Sunday. And Monday. And Monday. And Monday. Yeah. 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 All right, thank you, Tracy. So just to hit pause here for a second, do you guys have any question on anything else that we talked about earlier? Any returning parents have some sage advice to, <laughs> to offer? All right, so we're gonna talk about some next steps here. This just kind of wraps up what you do from here. Okay, uh, so especially for new parents, if you're wondering how to get involved or your student already is. If you start, like, if a student comes to one of our meetings, which are, like I said earlier, Monday and Thursday, Monday 4 to 7, Thursday 4 to 9, we get them signed up on Slack. We get them to where they take a tour about the different teams doing different, uh, different teams doing different things in the workshop. We get them plugged in and they start working. Um, so if, if they are interested, have them keep coming to these practices. We've, we've created time clock uh, entries for all of them so they can clock in. We have jobs for all of them. There's tons that they can learn. It's great that we give them a chance now to kind of feel it out because I'm just going to tell you, when January like, hits, it is not stopping. It's on go. And people are running all over the place. You needed things two days ago, and it's just it's just crazy. So the fact that we have this opportunity now to kind of do a mock-up before we get to grits and everything like that is a great chance for them to kind of feel out what they would want to do, and so that when we hit the ground running in January, they know where they want to be and they know what they want to do uh, with that. Um, if you haven't registered for grits, too late. So don't worry about that. There's always next time. Um, but volunteer for grits. But volunteer for grits, absolutely. <laughs> and come on out and, and watch it, it's great. Um, you need to, if you uh, want to become part of the Booster Club, which I highly recommend, I mean, uh, I highly recommend it because, uh, like I said before, and I'm going to tell you again, we can't do this without you. Uh, we can't. I can't. It's, it's a huge, huge responsibility, and I will fall very, very short, no matter how hard I work at it. Um, so if you really want to feel like you are making accomplishments and you are really helping your student, and you're really helping the school, this is a great way to do it. Uh, I will sing your praises to the next time. Uh, come to the November 16th booster meeting, um, and the booster club has, has bylaws, has voting members. It is, it is as official as official gets, and if you want to uh, be a part of the guiding, so once again, it's a student-run organization, but they need guidance. If you want to help guide them down the correct path, becoming a booster club member is the way to do it. Um, and then membership dues deadline, uh, like Ms. Priego said, is uh, December 7th. And that is if they want to participate in the actual build season, of, or build competition season in January through April. Uh, any questions about that? Anything at all? Any questions about anything at all? Like anything we've all talked about? So everybody should have, if you don't, um, we've got some extras in the past in front of you on the table should be an application, a paper copy. Those are also available on the website. 1746.com. Um, you can take those home with you tonight. If you want to write a check today, that would be awesome. Um, talk to either me or Tracy or Robin, and we will collect those and get you marked off, at least for this part of the piece. Um, the last thing I want to say is we really, as a booster club, only have three meetings that we do in the course of a year where really your participation is important. Um, tonight's one of them. Next November is another one. We're actually going to be voting in some new members on the board, um, and we want to present that to you guys today. Um, vacancies open up. 
Um, we want to invite you to participate at that level too, especially for returning. Parents. But if there's someone that's a freshman parent and is ready to roll into a strong leadership position, certainly there's openings for that too. Um, we do our third meeting generally before the busy part of the season, which is that April time period. Um, that Tracy was talking about. That's not necessarily mandatory, but if you're wanting to get details about the trip and answer questions, it's just one last time um, to have conversations with us. There may be some other mandatory meetings that get set up for trips, um, especially the overnight trips. Um, but from a booster standpoint, that's about what we're asking for in terms of the booster budget. So with that being said, unless there are any other questions, I'll pause. This concludes the parent meeting. So here's what we're going to do. Um, and feel free to leave, I get it. <laughs> if you're a new parent and you're not interested in the next meeting that we're going to have, where we talk about our bylaws, you're free to go. We're going to take, I've got 8.52 on my watch. So at 9 o'clock is when I want to start the booster meeting. Um, members of the booster club, please do stay. Good news, I've got bad news. At 9 o'clock. <coughs> That's okay. We'll be really quick. Okay. Right. That's motivation to like that. Um, Kyle, any questions? Do students have to stick around for the second part of the meeting? Students do not know. Which I'll be Unless your parents are driving you home. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be heading back to my room to unlock it so you guys can get your, your stuff out of there if you need it. And then you can clock out. Yeah. Thank you.